before we get into the rebranding Android apps webinar, I would like to introduce you to the topics which we'll dive into this session. So first, we'll start from the introduction of mobile applications in Zoho Creator, followed by rebranding these mobile applications and why rebranding is necessary and in Creator why it is used, followed by the configuration part, which requires the prerequisites for an Android app rebranding and the code sign process and how to generate the APK and AAB files. And we'll also show you a quick demonstration of how to do this. And we'll also discuss some frequently answered questions followed by the final Q&A. So before we get into the mobile applications part in Zoho Creator, let me provide a quick idea of what Zoho Creator is. So Zoho Creator is a local platform which helps you build multi-platform applications to solve your unique business needs. It empowers your IT and business teams to collaborate together and deliver apps faster than ever. C6 is the latest version of Zoho Creator. And with the new C6 version, we have simplified the development process by using the most advanced low-code tools to maximize our user benefits. So mobile apps in Creator. So Creator handles, Creator platform handles deployment and hosting for you from its end which is taken care by Zoho's data centers across all the, across the globe. So all you need to do is build the application and once it is ready, select the app or the specific environment of the app and deploy it. So it enables you to easily build applications in both Android and iOS platform with multiple features and functionalities. So the apps which you built in the web will be automatically available as native Android and iOS apps. So you can download these apps as separate mobile apps for both the iOS and Android devices. So there are two variants of the applications in Creator. So whenever the Creator applications are shared with your users, there can be two types of users. The first type is your internal organizational users. Those are the users app. And the second type is your users who are outside your organization. They may be your vendors, they may be your customers, or any other part-time consultants. So you may be you will be able to export two different apps. The first one is a user's app, and the second one is a portal user's app, that is the customer's app. And these apps can be rebranded and uploaded in your specific user's devices. So you may publish these apps and share with your internal organization users and customers, as I informed. And these mobile applications, which can be developed in Creator, has some highlights. The first, like these are a very few of them. And the first one is instant media upload. It will allow you to instantly take a capture of a picture from your camera and upload that image with some editing with the internal system uh, features. And you'll be able to upload the image automatically inside the app. And the second photo, you can see the QR or barcode scanner. So in case if you'd like to gather input from a QR code or a barcode, you'll be able to enable that property from the backend of the app. And once the property is enabled for that field, you'll be able to gather data by scanning the respective codes. And also Creator provides you gesture control. So gesture control allows you to easily navigate through the actions you want to perform inside the data, inside the applications reports. And also the map integration is available, which will allow you to easily navigate or like uh, or mark that specific that data from the maps into the creator application and creator also supports offline mode instant notifications and real-time synchronization with the cloud data so these are some of the highlights in the mobile apps in zoho creator so now let's come to the main topic what is rebranding so you'll be able to personalize the mobile applications with the icon of your choice and publish it to the App Store or Play Store. That is what rebranding is. So rebranding helps you morph the functionality of the creator app into an application representing your organization. So the native apps can be created for both iOS and Android operating systems, provided certain prerequisites are configured in the backend. So this will allow you to showcase your brand in all of your devices all of your users' devices. 
So now the next question arises. Why do we need rebranding? So the goal of all rebranding is to associate their own brand with the style and quality of the product and also provide a customized experience. When a company rebrands its app, it is doing so with the intention of connecting its own brand with the app style and also the quality while giving the users a more personalized experience. This can help create a stronger bond between the brand and its users and potentially enhancing the overall perception of the product or the brand. So it is, it is about influencing the customer perception, connecting the organization and its code values with the employees and external users. And finally, it provides brand recognition across the Play Store and App Store. So now we are coming to the second part of the webinar, which involves the prerequisites. The first step that is the prerequisites for rebranding the user Android app. So firstly, for internal users, we need to generate the upload keystore file. So this will require you to have the Java development kit toolkit installed in your system where you are generating the keystore file. And this is followed by the app signing keystore file for users. And for and finally, if required, that is if you need instant mobile notifications, push notifications for your application, you need to download the Firebase configuration file from the Google console, Play console, and also the FCM server key. So this can be used for the notifications setup. And similarly for the customers, we just need to generate a key store file and download the Firebase config key and FCM server key. So these are the prerequisites required. So let me just show you a quick demonstration of how this is done in the platform. Yes. So I have here the command which has to be used for copying. And we can just like edit this and use it. So this is available in a help guide, which is rebranding apps in Zoho Creator. We, we provide you the help guide here. and. From here, you can select the prerequisites for the user Android app. The first step, as you can see, this is the generating the upload keystore file. And this is the command which has to be run in the command prompt. That is your terminal. So I'm just going to copy this and get back to my terminal. So first, I'm going to check whether the Java, Java is available in my system. So I'm going to just use this command. Yes, so Java is available in my system. Yeah. So next, I'm going to just copy the command, which I pasted from there. And I'm going to provide a keystore file name and alias name here. So let me just rename the file as set test for and I'm going to name the alias name as test Android. Okay. So now I'm going to run this. And this will prompt me to set up a password for the file. So I'm going to just like enter the password, which won't be available, which won't be available for display. You again have to re enter the password. And you have to give some details for the key store. So I'm going to just like Cedric Zilko Zoho. And you're going to give the details. And finally, you can just enter S and the file will be generated. So now we just have to enter the password. And if it is the same password, you can just click. Yes, that is input. OK, so since I have, haven't have entered the matching passwords, it's showing me an error. But I'm just going to click Enter. So the same password is used. OK, so now the set test 4.keystore, this is a file which has been generated and stored in my account. That is my application. 
So once the file is generated, we can just get back and we can start to uh, set up the code sign process. Okay, so this is how you need to generate the keystone file. So let's get back to the webinar here. And yes, so after, so actually, what is this keystone file? Yeah, I need to talk about this. So the keystone file is something that contains a single or multiple pairs of a private key and a signed certificate for its public key. The file must be protected with a password, so that is accessible only by the administrators. And the app signing keystore file is used in the app signing process uh, to avoid unauthorized use of keys on the Android devices. So the Android key store lets apps specify authorized use of their keys when they generate it. So we get to the second part. That is the code sign pro process for the customers. That is the code sign process for both users and customers. We have two code sign process, but both are similar. That is the first we have to navigate to the mobile app tab in Zoho Creator Platform. And from that, you have to select the application for which the mobile app has to be exported as a rebranded app. And you need to select the application type as user and the platform as Android. For the user, you can select the code sign slider and click generate client to create an authorization for it. You can enter the package name and set the app icon if required. And you may select what type of format you need to export. So if you want to just share it to users directly uh, rather than sharing it to the Play Store, you can just set select APK and download the file. And once the file is downloaded, you can share it with users or else you can also, you will also have the option to distribute the app via an invitation link. So if you want to enable push notification, you can upload the, the configuration file and enter the FCM server key. So this will allow you to enable push notifications for the app. And the push notifications that are configured in the backend of the app will be reflected. And for the code sign, once you click on the code sign process, the process will be initiated and successfully completed within five to 10 minutes based on the uh, network. And after completion, the status of your app will be code signed. The status will be updated and you can start distributing the code signed app by either downloading the AAB file, APK file, or directly send the apps invite link. This process is similar for the customers, except you will just have to in upload the keystore file and not the keystore app signing file. So just the keystore file is enough for the, for the customers. And for the distribution part, you'll be getting only the APK and the code sign. Like you'll be able to code sign and getting the APK of the file. The distribution generally for both customers and users comes in three ways. The first way is downloading the app's AAB file. And once the AAB is downloaded, you can generate the APK from it and share it directly. And finally, you can send an invite link to the users. So they will be getting an email notification to, the e to their emails and from there they can access. But these users should be your app users. The application has to be already shared with them with a certain permission set and they have to be active in order. So you can like select the user email address from the user's field and directly share it with them. So let's get, get into the demonstration of setting up the app and getting into it. Okay, so this is my Zoho Creator test account. I'm just going to get into the mobile section where we are gonna perform the configuration part. And now you can see I have already created multiple apps here. Yeah, so I'm the, since the code signing process would be taking some time, I'll be showing an existing app uh, on how it's done, but the configuration I'll be doing it for you. So we are gonna click create new and I'm gonna select an application. This is the first step. So let me just select some customer service tracker. Okay. And I'm going to select the user that is for the internal users. And I'm going to select the Android. Click next. So now you have to enter a package name. So the package name can be organization name, the project name, but you have to memorize it because this is, this is required. So you can set up the uh, push notification. That is, it is, you can set up the project in the Google Google Cloud. So that would be uh, from where you can get the FCM 
server key and the Firebase config file for the push notifications. So the first step before setting the package name is to obtain an identity for the app. So you're gonna click generate client. And this will create an authorization ID for the integration. So once I click create, it is set up. And now I'm getting into the page. That's okay. I'm gonna just create like com dot, uh, say customer service. Zilka. And you can even upload a custom icon with this specification if you need it, or you can just get to the default icon of the app based on the app name. You can change it in your app sections as well. And I'm gonna first export an APK file. So I have selected APK, or else you can also select the app bundle both. So if you select both, you'll be, you need to upload the key store file and the app sign file separately. But if you just select one, one of it, it will prompt you to just input one of it, okay? So I'm just going to select the Android package and I'm gonna click browse. So here's the key store files I have generated and this is the latest one, set test four. So I'm just gonna click open and I'm gonna enter the password. And the key password, which was the same and the alias name. So the alias name is the one which I set up here. Can if you if you forget the name, so you can just come back here and check it. So it is test Android. This is my alias. Name. And for now, I'm not going to enable push notification. So if I enable it, it will ask me to upload the JSON file and the FCM server key, which has to be done in the Google cloud in. So we have help guide for this, uh, where we provided the steps on how to do uh, export the file and take the FCM server key from the Google Cloud. You can do it from that and you can enable it. I'm gonna click code sign. So the process has been started and it will show you the status that code sign is in progress. So once the code sign process is completed for the user app, your app would be available like this. You can download the application that is via the download APK button. You can click on it and the APK would be exported into your device. And if and even if you want to enable the push notifications after that, you need to just like click S and recode sign it again. So the code signing will be removed. And again, you have to recode sign it. And then you can export the uh, app along with the push notifications enabled in it, okay? So for now, I'm not gonna do this. And uh, if you wanna share it to the users, the users in your account will be available here. And from there, you can select it and share it with them. Enter share. So once I click share, the application is successfully shared to the users. You can see, so now I'm click, gonna click close and Similarly, for customers, you can also do the same, that is the same steps, and you'll be able to download the AAB, and even after downloading the AAB, you can generate the APK for it. The APK generation may take some time based on the app, and once it is available, you can download it from here. So I just enabled it before the start of the session, and it's still going on. So it may take some time in some cases, and uh, if, you, if you don't wanna spend more time, you can like recode sign it and uh, export the application. So I'm gonna to get to the a single, a simple application to show you what are the configurations you can do in the backend. So let's go to the point of sale app. And this application I have installed in my device, which I'll be showcasing you shortly. So you can get to the backend of this application and you can see the mobile setup from here. Like how you want the layout to be as a car type, or a plane type. And you can also customize the sections on how it has to be displayed, the icons. And you can also set up the theme of the application from here and how the layout should be, like column card, the sliding panel. So this is a page, so here you won't be able to see the changes. I'm gonna get back to, let's say, this 
this report yeah this form and the form placement you can set it from here so this will allow you like multiple options based on how the form is set up okay and coming to the edit mode of this form and opening the form builder you can see that i have I have added a field with the QR code input from here. And this will allow you to get input before the form is displayed. Like whenever you open the form, you need to input that is scan the codes first and get the input inside the form. And only then it will allow you to input the other data. So that is this property. And if, if you want to disable manual input, that only the uh, QR code and barcode scan should be uh, provided for inputting the data, you can check this property also. Similarly, for the signature, you'll be able to sign directly from the app, from the, from the mobile application. And for image, you'll be able to capture through camera if you enable this option in the browse options. And for phone, you'll also be able to sync with your contacts in the mobile and fetch the data. So I'm going to start sharing my mobile screen now. So give me a minute. Where are we? Yes. Before getting to the yes. I hope you are all able to see my screen. And uh, just gonna change the settings. Yeah. So this is my this is my mobile device, and these are the applications I'm using. That is a Zoho meeting to showcase it. That's why it's available. And this is the application which I installed. That is the point of sale app, which I exported and installed in my app as a standalone application. So I'm going to click on it. And you can see the application is available now. It is opening. And uh, based on my permission, the modules will be available. So when I want to access a form, I can access a form. And the design which I configured, that is a layout configuration, would be reflected here. So due to the network, there is some lag, but I hope it is not that much delay for users. And let's go to this testing page where we added the QR code input and these fields. Yeah. So you can see here that if I select the QR code input, I can input manually. However, if the manual input is disabled, the only way for me to input the data is through the QR code. So this will ask me whether I'm allowed to take a picture and I have to enable the camera permissions. And once the, the camera permissions is enabled, it will allow me to input the data through the camera. So I'm going to just like, yes. So, OK. And finally, the phone number the phone number can be fetched from the contacts that is from our, from your device. So that is one way of inputting the phone number information. And the address, the field data can be inputted based on the options you have given for the address field in the form. Next, we have the image where we have three options enabled for it. The first one is to take a photo, and the uh, second one is to upload a photo from the local storage. And finally, the upload link. So if you want to take a photo, you can click on take the photo. And the camera access, if enabled, it will allow you to take a photo and upload it. And the signature field is the next one. So for the signature field, you can just click on it, and you can start signing. That is your sign in the field. So you can just click on it, and uh, you can just do a signature. Even if you want to clear it, you can clear and do it again, and click done. Similarly, for the recording the video, you'll be able to record video from your device screen. That is your device, or else you'll be able to upload the video from the local storage. So these are the features which are available. Uh, some of the features which are available for inputting the data through mobile applications in the Zoho Creator platform. 
so i'm going to get back and uh, since i was i was already inputting some data it is asking me whether i want to go back without saving it as a draft so save as a draft is also available and the data which you have already inputted if you want to manipulate it you can go to the reports and you can do these yes Uh, gestures that is the long press and uh, like to view or duplicate the record and different reports have different settings like this all testings report has the gesture of like sliding to the right to view the record so if i wanna, if i want to view the record i just have to hard slide to the right similarly you can set up this as a in the back end like swipe to the right swipe to the left what are the actions you want to configure to these gestures you can do that in the back end and just yes, so this is how uh, the the gestures play an important role like to easily navigate through the app and access the actions which you want to do inside the apps data so let's get back to the so once the app is exported to your account you'll be able to share it to the users and the users will be able to access the application changes which you have made so now coming to the a few frequently answered questions like some questions which may come to your mind on how the app gets updated with the changes made in the backend so that is the first question the backend updates which are made inside the zoho creator app in your in the in the platform will be automatically applied to the rebranded applications so whenever you make a new change that is you add a new form you add a couple forms or you add like tens of forms those will be automatically available in the rebranded application available in the play store or the app store however there is a, there are a few exceptions the exceptions apply to new features which are being brought into the creator platform or bug fixes in case so bug fix like the bugs are very rare in creator in case of any bug we'll be we'll be updating the changes again to the platform and you'll be required to recode sign and uh, again take the apk or the aab file and share it with your users so to incorporate the, these exceptions apps app resigning and uploading a new version is required and creator allows you to create apps that can work offline so that is one of the important features you can design an application and store data locally inside your device and synchronize it when a connection that is when an internet connection is available until then the data will be stored inside the local application in your device zoho creator mobile apps are designed to be responsive by default so whatever design you are making inside the apps with the app components will be automatically responsive in the mobile and uh, the app will adjust to the, the the mobile devices configuration of the size and uh, it will be fit to various screen sizes and devices the offline mobile part if you want to take a look at it i can show you it yes. so this is my application and i can get to the profile from here you can see there is an option called notifications and settings i'm going to click on settings and this will allow me to navigate to the accessibility part where, where we can find the offline components so from here i can click on offline components and i can add a component to be available as offline so if i want to add the customers module as an offline component in the app in the in this application i can just select it and okay so i have to have some fields that are offline compatible there are some limitations that may be the reason in that case okay i have added the report as an offline component for now so these offline components will be synchronized automatically at 2 am device time or like when your network is available so you can see like you can also manually synchronize it and add more components to it so auto sync can be removed based on the user's preference so this is how the offline capabilities are and also dark mode is available so you can always enable it or you can enable it if required based on the use based on the user's preferences these options are for the users who are using the rebranded app so i hope you all got an idea of how the rebranded apps can be modified and can be configured and exported from your account to your users devices shared with users and customers at like you can try zoho creator with the sign up link i have shared to you and uh, please be a part of our application so and Finally 
you can reach us at support at zahocreator.com or solutions at zahocreator.com and we'll be able to our support teams will be able to assist you to onboard and uh, get started in developing your business applications so thank you again and have a great day